Tata is your average disgusting loser trying to clap his childhood crush until one day he get into an accident and loses memory. Several years later, Tata joins university and falls in love with the popular girl of his class but just as he was about to enjoy his life, his past trauma comes to haunt him. However, before any of this, early in the morning, Tata Banri, a somewhat unlucky guy, arrives late to his university's opening ceremony. Being dumb, he doesn't know where his university is located and finds himself clueless about how to reach the university. While trying to figure things out, he overhears a group of two hot chicks talking about heading to the same faculty. He decides to follow them, hoping they'll lead him in the right direction. Unfortunately, he loses sight of them when they enter a store. Tata takes a moment to buy some ice cream and by the time he steps outside, the girls are gone, leaving him feeling lost. At that moment, he meets Mitsuo Yanagisawa, another student who was also following the same girls and similarly lost them in the store. They quickly hit it off and decide to find their way to the university together. Upon reaching the university, out of nowhere, a taxi stops, and a stunning girl with a bouquet of roses steps out. The loser gets surprised when she starts hitting Mitsuo with the flowers while congratulating him on getting into university. Before she leaves, she tells him she'll always be there for him. To lighten the awkward moment, Tata picks up the fallen roses and starts handing them out to girls passing by. Mitsuo, still in shock on the ground, sees what Tata is doing and joins in to help. Later, in class, Mitsuo tells Tata about the girl. Turns out, her name is Kuko Kaga, and she is very determined and has everything in her life planned out. Moreover, she seems to be madly in love with Mitsuo. Just then, a girl from behind starts talking to them, and it turns out to be Kuko herself. Mitsuo can't believe it, but she explains that she changed her plans to study at the same university as him for the next four years. Scared, Mitsuo runs away and drops all his notes. Kata, left alone, starts picking up Mitsuo's notes. While he is doing this, another classmate, Chinami Oka, shows up and helps him. They start talking and quickly become friends. After finishing up at the faculty, Tata stumbles upon a lively festival where various clubs are eagerly trying to recruit new members. Just when the Latin dance club is about to convince him to join, a senior law student named Hayashida Nana steps in to help. She introduces herself as Linda and reassures Tata that her club doesn't pressure anyone to join. Instead, they focus on assisting newcomers. Before parting ways, Tata compliments her lipstick, and she surprises him with a kiss. Later in the evening, as Tata heads home, he runs into Kuko, who is waiting for Mitsuo. At that moment, Tata receives a call from Mitsuo, who is still at school. Kuko overhears the conversation, grabs Tata's phone, and tells Mitsuo that she will come to get him. She leaves with Tata's phone but soon returns it, acting very sweet and polite. After she leaves, Tata watches her go and recalls a past incident when he was hit by a motorcycle. The next day, while Tata is waiting for someone, he has a strange dream. In the dream, he is standing on a cliff with his eyes covered by a blindfold. Someone finds him there, but then the image of Kuko comes into his mind, and he wakes up. A week goes by, and one day at the university, Tata sees Kuko laughing while looking at her phone. He walks over and asks her what she is doing. Kuko shows him some photos of herself and Mitsuo when they were kids and asks if he has seen Mitsuo because he has been avoiding her. Just then, Mitsuo walks by behind her, making signals to Tata not to say anything. Tata tries to distract Kuko, but she notices Mitsuo and starts chasing him around the university. Kuko can't catch Mitsuo, so she asks Tata if he can find out Mitsuo's schedule for her, saying she will pay him. Tata doesn't want to do it, so Kuko says she was just joking and then heads to her class. After Kuko leaves, the boy hears people gossiping about her wealthy family. Meanwhile, Linda is quietly watching everything unfold from behind. Sometime later, the boy is at home feeding his friend Mitsuo, who isn't getting any money from his parents since he transferred to a different university to avoid Kuko. Tata mentions to Mitsuo that he feels bad for Kuko because she's isolated and has no friends. They have a minor disagreement, but Mitsuo eventually sees Tata's point. Mitsuo takes Tata to a film club's welcome event. At the event, Mitsuo decides to become a member, and they discover that Kuko is also part of the film club. During the event, Tata hears a lot of commotion from a nearby room. Ignoring the film club members' warnings about a wild group, he goes to check it out. He finds the tea club girls in a chaotic state, and they drag him into their party. The party has several men dressed as butlers, but Tata refuses to drink with them. Instead, they make him compete against another guy, who admits he only likes 2D girls and not real ones, earning him the nickname 2D Boy. The next morning, Mitsuo meets Tata on their way to university and tells him he ended up attending five parties with the tea club girls the previous night. Mitsuo spots Kuko searching for him and decides to hide, asking Tata not to reveal his location. 
After classes, Tata wants to head home but gets surrounded by various university clubs again. Linda comes to his rescue, loudly claiming him for her club, the Cultural Research Club. She feels a bit down when she realizes he doesn't remember her name but quickly perks up and invites him out. However, seeing Kuko waiting alone for Mitsuo, Linda encourages Tata to go talk to her. Tata takes a seat next to Kuko, and she opens up about feeling unnoticed at the university. She explains that she only knows Mitsuo, who doesn't really talk to her, and that no one else approaches her. Tata suggests they attend a club welcome event together so she can make new friends. At that moment, another girl arrives and invites them to join her for coffee at a cafe. This girl spends hours talking to them about her club and eventually invites them to a three-day, two-night welcome party. She mentions that she's not a student at their university but enjoys interacting with students from other schools. After leaving the cafe, Tata and Kuko decide to attend the event together to meet new people. The day of the trip to the party finally comes, and Tata is the first to arrive. Soon after, Kuko shows up and asks Tata if Mitsuo knows about the trip. Tata shows her a message from Mitsuo, which makes Kuko happy because she thinks Mitsuo is thinking about her. Just then, they spot the 2D boy, who is with a group of people also going on the trip. Tata introduces Kuko to the 2D boy, and they learn that his real name is Takaya Sato. After a while, some white cars arrive. Club members get out of the cars and tell everyone to fill out forms with their information. They then instruct everyone to get into the cars. As they travel, Tata starts to feel uneasy because the cars take a different route than expected. They eventually arrive at a place that looks like a mansion. Everyone soon realizes that they are being held by the club against their will. The club members lock up their luggage and make them attend lectures. Later, they are taken to dinner. During dinner, all the new guys who went to the trip start complaining, while Tata is worried about Kuko. He comes up with a plan. He pretends to be a believer and shares his story about an accident he had where he lost most of his memory. He demands that anyone who doesn't want to be there should be allowed to leave. The club members believe him and let everyone go, including Kuko. But just when Tata thought he had saved Kuko, she comes back, saying she wants to stay because she knew he was pretending and didn't want to leave him alone. They go back to the dining hall, and Tata takes advantage of the fact that the members are drunk to ask for the key to their luggage. They give it to him, but the girl who invited them to the party decides to go with them. Because of this, they start running until they reach the room where their luggage is kept and finally escape through a window. Once outside, they run far away until they lose sight of the mansion, but they still have no signal on their phones to contact anyone. As they walk, they start chatting about Mitsuo and Kuko's true feelings for him. It's clear that she really cares about him. Kuko also shows a fun and happy side that she doesn't show when she's with Mitsuo. Later, Kuko asks Tata about his life. He tells her that after his accident, everything feels unreal and he doesn't remember anything. But he says he's okay with it because he likes not having to worry about things. After talking for a bit, they notice some lights in the distance. They feel unsure about going closer, thinking it might be some club members, but thankfully they are found by Linda. The day after their weird trip, Tata explains that Linda saved them. She was at the university's summer house where her club was having a welcome party very close to where they were. The next day, Tata goes to the university and his friends greet him warmly. While they are in the cafeteria, Mitsuo tells Tata that he was so worried that he even wrote to Kuko. Tata says she must be very happy about that and thinks back to the previous day, even wondering if Mitsuo hit him. Later, Takaya heads to class, and Mitsuo tells Kuko that since they both don't have classes until the afternoon, they can spend time together. Kuko shows up, and things get tense until Mitsuo steps in and stands up for her, then leaves with her. Tata stays behind because he wants to thank Linda's club members for their help. After his friends leave, Kuko looks nervous. She talks to Tata, admitting that she often does things to make Mitsuo dislike her more, and she can't help it. They decide to thank Linda together, and when they meet her, she invites them to join her club. They decide to check it out first. At the club room, they express their thanks. After leaving, Tata tells Kuko that he can't dance and wants to join Linda's club. But Kuko doesn't want to join because she wants to be in Mitsuo's club and try to change his mind. A few days later in class, Mitsuo tells Tata that he likes Kuko and plans to break up with her to start a serious relationship with someone else, which worries Tata. After a few days of not attending class, Kuko asks Tata to meet her at a cafe. When they arrive, they see Mitsuo there. Kuko wants to talk to Mitsuo about why they belong together and shows him old photos and memories from their childhood. But Mitsuo cuts her off, telling her that he has feelings for Oka and wants to be with her instead. Kuko is surprised and tries to remind Mitsuo of their shared past. But he explains that their history is the reason he can't be in a relationship with her. He tells Kuko that she is very special to him, but he can't fall in love with her. Kuko feels like he hates her and starts crying and yelling. Mitsuo leaves and Kuko stays behind, apologizing to Tata, who patiently waits for her to calm down. 
As the hours went by, it was time to go, but she wanted to stay longer. Suddenly, a cool-looking girl named Lily showed up and invited her to a fun dance party. At the party, she danced wildly, enjoying every moment until Lily had to gently guide her off the stage, and she was escorted out of the venue. Tata then took her back to her place, where he slept on the floor while she rested on the bed. While there, she started crying, realizing she had been too pushy with her wishes towards Mitsuo, who had his feelings too. Tata shared that he understood her feelings because he also feared rejection, which made him keep his distance from others when he lost his memory. He also mentioned that once his memories returned, the current version of him would change. She asked him to remember her, and he promised he would never forget her because he liked her a lot and cared deeply about her. She was surprised by his confession, but they continued their conversation as usual. Later, Kuko heads back home and texts Tata tells her fear rejection because she push others away too. The following day, Tata takes a train to visit his parents. When he gets there, he goes to his old room and finds his yearbook. As he flips through it, some old photos fall out. When he picks them up, he realizes they are pictures of him and Linda from many years ago. Seeing those photos, Tata rushes to the bridge where his accident happened. There, he starts questioning why he can't remember anything and what his connection with Linda was. He calls Mitsuo and begins to cry. Meanwhile, a ghostly version of Tata's old self watches him. The ghostly Tata explains that after the accident, his soul was separated from his body. He can only watch the new Tata live his life but can't communicate with him. On his way back home on the train, Tata gets a message from Kuko asking to talk later. He goes to the cafe where Kuko is waiting for him. She tells him that they recently met and she wants them to be good friends. She gives him one of the two makeup mirrors they managed to bring when they escaped. Tata accepts her friendship in the gift. The next day, while Mitsuo and Tata are heading to the university, Mitsuo worries that Kuko might have gone too far with her actions. They see her in the university cafeteria, where she is overly enthusiastic about their friendship. Linda calls and explains that she's helping Kuko with her class schedule. The group watches her, and instead of mentioning the photo, Tata introduces Mitsuo to Kuko. Kuko asks Tata about his classes and gets scared when she learns he has a difficult professor. She runs off to try and change her class. Linda invites them to join her club again, and this time, Kuko accepts for both of them. Later in the club room where everyone introduces themselves and starts dancing, Kuko thinks the dance is easy, but when she starts, she moves awkwardly like a robot, showing she's really bad at it. After they leave the club, Kuko confronts Tata, upset because he's her best friend and can dance while she can. She starts crying, and Tata realizes she's under a lot of stress since her recent rejection. Later, they go to a cafe, and Kuko apologizes for her earlier behavior. Tata lends her his makeup mirror, and she's happy to use it. Kuko explains that she's trying to figure out her feelings, which is making everything chaotic. Tata understands, and she keeps talking, saying she hopes to become more like Linda because Linda is popular and probably has a boyfriend. When Tata gets back home, he thinks about Linda and wonders why she acts like she doesn't know him. He remembers how he used to sneak out of the hospital every night, following a light outside his window. He would meet a girl there who said she studied at the University of Tokyo and encouraged him to study there too. He realizes that the girl was Linda, making him question what their relationship really is. Before Tata lost his old memories, he was a good-for-nothing loser who used to cry at everything and Linda looked after him. On the last day of classes, they always had a farewell with their friends. At the end, Tata confessed his feelings to Linda and said he was willing to go to Tokyo so they could study together. Linda asked for some time to think about it, and he told her he'd wait for her at the bridge the next day, like always. While Tata's ghost watches his current self sleeping, he reveals that he loved Linda even though she only saw him as a friend, much like his situation with Kuko. The next day, at the university cafeteria, Oka invites Kuko and Tata to a party. Kuko declines, but Tata agrees to go. Later, Tata asks Oka why she invited Kuko despite treating her poorly, suspecting bad intention. Oka insists she genuinely wants to be friends with Kuko, so Tata decides to help her convince Kuko to attend the party. At the party, Oka meets many people, including Kuko, who came because Tata invited her. Kuko quickly starts arguing with Mitsuo. She dares him to confess his feelings to Oka, accusing him of pretending to like her just to avoid Kuko. Frustrated, Mitsuo asks Oka to be his girlfriend in front of everyone, but Oka thinks he's joking. Both Mitsuo and Kuko get upset. Tata and Takaya step in and take them to another room. Later, Oka starts recording for her club. By the end of the party, Mitsuo and Kuko are as distant as Tata and Takaya once were. On the way home, Kuko insists on going to Tata's place to complain about Mitsuo. Tata, fed up with her behavior, asks to end their friendship and returns her makeup mirror. She refuses to take it, but he says it was a mistake to rekindle their friendship after she rejected him. He calls a taxi for her and walks away, saying he won't wait for anyone. 
The next day, Linda notices that Tata is acting distant. When she tries to talk to him, he gets upset and accuses her of pretending not to know him from before. He then runs away and locks himself in the bathroom. Linda blames herself for everything and tells him through the door that she went to the bridge the next day to give him an answer but was too late. As it gets dark, Linda leaves the university, ignoring Kuko who is waiting at the door. Tata also ignores Kuko and starts running away. Kuko tries to catch up but can't, so she grabs someone else's bike and continues to chase him. Tata runs aimlessly until he reaches a bridge, thinking that falling again might fix everything. Just as he is about to jump, Kuko appears and knocks him down with the bike, stopping him. She tells him not to leave her, since she loves him as well. Afterward, the guy who owns the bike shows up with a police officer and accuses Kuko, leading her to the police station. While waiting for Kuko's dad to arrive, she apologizes to Tata for causing trouble. She explains that at the party, she wasn't thinking about Mitsuo. She was just upset that Kuko easily got what she had been working hard for and was afraid of losing him too. She admits she didn't want to face her feelings for him and says it would be fair if he rejected her, but he doesn't. Kuko's dad arrives, apologizes to Tata, and hopes they can still be friends. Kuko corrects him, saying they are actually dating. The next day, Kuko waits for Tata at the bus stop, and they head to the university together. At the university, Takaya sees them holding hands. Kuko tells him they're now dating, and she loves Tata, which surprises Takaya. Later, in the cafeteria, Mitsuo shows up with dyed hair. He explains that after getting rejected, he was going to shave his head, but the hairdresser decided to practice and dyed it instead. Mitsuo is happy that Tata and Kuko are together, feeling relieved. However, Kuko starts talking about Oka's rejection. Tata cuts her off, saying it's time for class, and they agree to meet later. Oka appears, but Mitsuo, feeling embarrassed, runs away. Oka explains she didn't take his confession seriously because it was at a party. Then Linda shows up wanting to talk to Tata, but he quickly leaves the cafeteria. Over time, Tata and Kuko grow closer, but Tata starts ignoring Linda's calls and messages. One day, while cleaning his room, Tata finds a box full of magazines. Kuko visits and asks about Linda, but Tata just says they had a misunderstanding. Kuko tries to help, but Tata gets emotional, and they stop talking. Kuko accepts his explanation and opens the box, thinking it has chips, but they both get scared when they see what's inside. On the bed, Tata apologizes, and Kuko says their relationship is just beginning, but she wants their first time to be in Paris. They decide to go buy cake and run into Nana in the elevator but don't recognize her without makeup. A few days later, Tata gets a call about a water leak in his neighbor's room and is asked to check if his room is affected. He leaves Kuko at the university and hurries home, where he finds Nana, the girl from the elevator. She admits she's messed up his neighbor's room and friend. As Tata opens his door, Nana pulls Linda out of his room and leaves them to talk. Tata invites Linda inside to discuss, and he starts crying. Nana mentions the love confession he made after they graduated. Just then, Kuko calls, saying Mitsuo is in some kind of problem. In the past, while waiting for Linda, Tata hears her telling a friend that she doesn't see him as a man and doesn't like him at all. This makes Tata angry. When Linda realizes he heard, she gets scared and tries to apologize over the next few days, but he avoids her. On a rainy day, she waits for him and apologizes. Tata forgives her, saying he doesn't like her either, but his ghost reveals that his feelings for her were real and he hopes she felt the same. In the present, Tata is on a call with his girlfriend while Linda is in her room. Kuko tells him that Mitsuo has had another issue with Oka and hasn't been seen since. She asks Tata to find him because she can't, as being alone with someone would be seen as cheating. Linda leaves, and Tata goes to find his friend. When Tata arrives, he sees Mitsuo being bothered by a girl from the theater club. To help, Tata pretends to be Mitsuo's boyfriend, which scares the girl away. They then go to Mitsuo's room, where Mitsuo explains that he asked Oka to stop talking to him because he felt betrayed by everyone gossiping about him. Tata calls Takaya and suggests throwing a party to lift Mitsuo's spirits. Later, Tata and Mitsuo go to the amusement park and meet Takaya and Kuko, who overheard the call and decided to join. Takaya gets a call from Oka, and Kuko invites her to the party, surprising Mitsuo. When Oka arrives, Kuko is mean to her to defend Mitsuo. Oka tells Kuko not to interfere and says Mitsuo already asked her not to talk to him. As Oka starts to cry, Kuko puts noodles on her face, joking that only she can cry cutely in front of Tata. This makes Oka laugh, and she asks Tata to record her being funny. Kuko and Oka laugh together, and they all spend a fun day at the amusement park, helping Mitsuo and Oka start to reconcile. At night, they head to Tata's house, have dinner, and sleep over. In the middle of the night, Tata wakes up and talks to Linda, who is staying in Nana's room. They go to the balcony to chat. Tata asks Linda what she said when he confessed his feelings for her before. She tells him she said no and didn't see him as a partner. Tata feels relieved and asks if she would want to go back to that time. 
Before she can answer, he shouts that he wants to go back but quickly changes his mind. Linda tells him it's just a dream, and they both return to their rooms. Meanwhile, Tata's ghost watches and says he still loves Linda but can't leave his body without disappearing. The next morning, Oka and Kuko leave early from Tata's room at the university. Oka tells Tata that Kuko has the flu and won't be attending classes. Days go by without them seeing each other, and they only text. One day, Kuko comes to the university for club practice and tells Tata she's feeling better. During practice, she distances herself and feels sad seeing Linda and Tata becoming friends again. After classes, Tata compliments Kuko on her beauty and traditional Japanese clothing, but he notices she looks sad. Suddenly, it starts raining, and they run for cover. Kuko then shares her insecurities, saying she tries to look pretty for him but always has negative thoughts about herself. She asks if he still loves her, and Tata comforts her, ending up kissing her. At the same time, Tata's ghost talks about a similar situation with Linda, but that's a secret between them. Flashing back, Tata's ghost reveals that Linda has an older brother they call Brother. One day, Brother says he will introduce them to his fiancée, showing how much he loves her. However, Linda privately tells Tata that she discovered the fiancé is cheating on her brother. They decide to gather proof by taking photos. They capture the fiancé and her boyfriend hugging and entering a room together. Just when they are about to take more pictures, Linda changes her mind, asks to delete everything, and decides to handle it maturely. After a while, the fiancé leaves the room, and Linda and Tata confront her. Linda asks to talk, and when the fiancé tries to run, they end up in her car. During their conversation, Tata notices that brother was watching everything from a window and then sits on the car hood, staring at them. In the end, Linda forgives the fiancé, tells her not to repeat her mistake, and promises to forget the incident. Later, they go to a store, and Linda starts crying because Tata scolds her for not taking action. He then reassures her, saying she can always rely on him and that she will always find him and hear his voice. Linda holds his hand and asks if she can trust him, but Tata remains silent. In the present, it's a new day, and Tata is at the cafe feeling down because Kuko has the flu again. Linda shows up, and Tata tells her about Kuko's illness. Before she leaves, Linda advises him to always listen to Kuko's voice, no matter where she is, because she is his girlfriend. The ghost of Tata realizes this, and later that night, while his body is asleep, he wonders if things would be different if he had answered Linda back then. Suddenly, Tata wakes up in the middle of the night and can't control his body well, falling off the bed. At that moment, he realizes he has a body again and is no longer a ghost. He immediately calls out Linda's name. Tata tries to get up to see Linda but ends up falling. When he stands up, he's back to his usual self and forgets why he wanted to see Linda or why he's even out of bed. Noticing his chin hurts from the fall, he goes back to bed, puzzled about what happened. The next morning, Tata wakes up with a high fever and tries to go to the hospital, but he's too weak to walk and trips near Nana's door. She comes out, sees him, and reluctantly takes him to the hospital. Afterward, she brings him back home and hands him over to Linda, who came because Nana informed her. In Tata's room, Linda starts taking care of him and tells him she has already called Kuko. Tata tells Linda he wants to see his girlfriend, but deep down he feels like staying with Linda because she feels real, while Kuko seems like a dream. He worries that if he doesn't see Linda, she will disappear along with his fever. As Linda helps him sit up, Kuko bursts in with a bouquet of flowers, angrily asking if Tata is cheating on her. Kuko then says that a guy with a girlfriend shouldn't be with another girl because it's cheating. Seeing Linda look scared, Kuko quickly changes her tone, saying it was just a joke and throws away the bouquet. Mitsuo catches the bouquet and enters, joking with Takaya about who he will marry. Mitsuo asks Kuko if she's jealous and angry, thinking Tata was being unfaithful. While Takaya introduces himself to Linda, Kuko apologizes to Tata, saying she didn't really think he was cheating but was upset about another girl taking care of him. Linda reassures Kuko, telling her not to worry. The atmosphere shifts as Mitsuo asks Linda about her parents' whereabouts, but when she doesn't respond, they smoothly change the topic to planning a beach trip together, including Kuko, as they had promised to always go on trips together. Meanwhile, Tata drifts off to sleep. When Tata wakes up, he finds only Kuko by his side. She apologizes for bringing everyone over and not being able to care for him properly. She admits feeling like she's not a good girlfriend and suggests that he might be better off with someone like Linda. Tata reassures her, saying that he wants to be with her and no one else. Kuko then expresses her desire to go to the beach in the summer, but just the two of them, without the others, so they can spend quality time together. Tata agrees, and they embrace each other warmly. Tata, now feeling better, goes out with Kuko and they take a train ride. During the trip, Kuko shares that her club friends call her Robichika because of her dance style. She also mentions that summer vacation is near and suggests they visit the beach. Tata worries because he hasn't told Kuko about his feelings for Linda or if she knows about his past with Linda. 
When they reach their stop, they meet up with their club, and the members show them brochures for a summer festival they will be part of. Tata feels jealous of the club leader, who is close to Linda, but reminds himself he shouldn't be jealous since he's with Kuko. After the meeting, Tata asks his friends for directions to the beach, wanting to fulfill his promise to Kuko. They tell him it will be hard without a car and money, especially if he wants to impress someone from a wealthy family like Kuko. Later, Tata and Kuko are sitting in a cafe. Kuko tells Tata not to get a job because it means they will have less time together. Even though Tata explains he needs money for their beach trip, Kuko insists she'll pay for everything. Then, Oka comes in and mentions she has to work. When she learns Tata is looking for a job, she says her cafe is hiring. As they wait and look around, Kuko firmly states she absolutely won't work there. Before heading to his room, Tata stops by Nana's door to give back the money she spent on the taxi and hands her some cookies to say thanks. Nana suggests he should also thank Linda, but Tata explains he's broke and job hunting. Nana then offers him a one-night waiter job if he brings Mitsuo along. The next day, Tata tells Mitsuo about the well-paying job, but just as Mitsuo hesitates, the tea club girls offer them better jobs. This makes them decide to take Nana's job offer without telling Kuko. On the event day, they meet at Tata's place to go together. Tata lies to Kuko, saying he's busy with a report and won't be reachable. On the way, Mitsuo compliments Tata for his patience with Kuko. Tata, however, thinks he only tolerates Kuko because he likes Linda and doesn't want to hurt Kuko's feeling. When they get to the place, Tata is dressed as a maid and Mitsuo as a butler. It turns out to be a birthday party. While they are working, Nana shows up dressed as a devil twin and reveals that her twin is Linda who is also working there. Tata and Linda feel awkward at first but then laugh at their outfits. Meanwhile, Kuko keeps calling Tata nonstop, and it turns out she has an old photo of Tata and Linda from when they were kids. At the party, everyone is enjoying themselves, including Mitsuo, who even shows off his muscles for tips. Meanwhile, Kuko gets worried when she can't reach Tata, so she goes to his place but finds it empty. She knocks on his door, but there's no response. Back at the party, Tata starts noticing Linda in a more attractive way. Linda begins taking photos with other girls, and Tata finds himself liking her poses. The crowd encourages them to take close pictures together, and they are given a light stick. Tata takes this chance to put his arm around Linda and poses with her, even biting the other end of the light stick. Kuko becomes frantic searching for Tata and eventually finds him at the party with Linda. When Tata sees Kuko, he quickly lets go of Linda, and both are shocked to see her. Kuko walks up, throws a drink at Tata, and Linda starts apologizing but is pulled away by Nana. Tata then takes Kuko to the dressing room, explains he was working, and hands her his apartment key, asking her to wait there. After finishing work, he hurries to his apartment and sees many worried messages from Kuko. When he arrives, he finds her sitting in the dark. She apologizes for throwing the drink and for stopping him when he was hurt. He sits down and apologizes too, explaining he took the job to be a good boyfriend and didn't know Linda would be there. He assures her that nothing happened between them. Kuko shows Tata an old picture of him and Linda as kids and asks him to be honest. Tata admits he used to love Linda and didn't tell Kuko because sometimes those feelings resurface, even if the memories don't. He feels guilty because Kuko is his girlfriend now. Kuko asks why he kept it a secret. She just wants to be a good girlfriend and not feel insecure. Tata says he wants to be open with her. Kuko stands up and hugs him, asking him to forget the past and stay with her because she loves him, even if she doesn't fully understand why. She hints she wants to stay the night, but he stops her. She confesses she's anxious because they haven't made any memories together yet. He agrees and tells her he understands, promising not to pressure her because of his own fears. He suggests they start taking photos and creating memories together. The next day, he meets Linda. She starts to apologize, but he reassures her that Kuko is okay and the issue is resolved. Later, by the riverside, Tata asks Linda if they were ever more than friends and if she ever had feelings for him. Linda replies that they were always just friends and she never saw him as anything more. Tata looks at the photo, thinking about tearing it up, but he struggles because he still feels something for Linda. He drops the photo, and Linda picks it up. Tata thanks her for everything but says they should act like strangers from now on because thinking about his amnesia is too stressful. He also mentions that Kuko is still scared and he wants to focus on his relationship with his girlfriend. Linda understands, stands up, and tears the photo into pieces, saying it's for the best, even if he disagrees. Later, Tata is in his room, taking selfies with Kuko and having fun. He tells her they should go outside and take more pictures together. They head out to take some photos together. We then enter Tata's dream, where he remembers escaping the hospital and meeting Linda. He decides to attend Tokyo University and promises Linda to deliver a message to a friend still in the hospital. Linda starts crying, saying it's too late, but just as she's about to tell him the message, Tata wakes up with that thought in his mind. 
summer vacation starts, and the boys' club members gather for the festival. Linda shows up, and she and Tata act like they only know each other from university. Kuko arrives, very nervous. Despite their efforts to calm her down, it doesn't work, and the group is about to leave. Linda then suggests they show the boys something, and they start doing a silly dance around Kuko. Tata, scared, runs to hug his girlfriend. Eventually, he joins the dance, and after a while, Kuko also joins in, overcoming her nervousness and enjoying the festival. As night falls, the festival wraps up, and they are told they can watch the fireworks. The couple decides to go. Before leaving, Linda says goodbye, mentioning she will see them at the camp. While waiting, we see a ghostly Tata, upset about what happened with Linda. He admits he still loves her and vows to become an evil spirit to make her unhappy. Suddenly, it starts raining, and everyone has to run for cover. Days pass, and they learn that the camp was cancelled. Tata faces a series of mishaps. One day, when Kuko visits his apartment, he waits by the elevator to surprise her, but Nana shows up instead and playfully hits his nose, making it bleed. It turns out Kuko used the stairs. She came to spend the day and make lunch, but when Tata tries to help, she gets nervous and blindfolds him. She turns him to face a mirror with his hands behind his back and starts telling a story about not peeking while pretending to cook. When she brings out the food, she realizes the blindfold has slipped off and he saw everything. Embarrassed, she claims it was a joke and the food is fake, making him laugh. As night falls, they walk together, and she admits she tried to practice cooking at home but got nervous, so her maid ended up doing it. Her maid even lent her the apron. They reach a park, and she asks to talk a bit more. Sitting on a bench, she shares that she plans to take cooking classes and skip her family vacation in Barcelona to prove she can be a real woman. Tata reassures her that it's not necessary. She should stay as she is and go on her vacation. He says he'd love to spend the vacation with her but thinks it might be boring for her. Kuko understands and wants to kiss him, but he turns away and suggests they leave. She brushes it off and leaves with him. When Tata is alone in his room, he worries that if Kuko meets someone new, he won't have any right to complain. This thought bothers him. Suddenly, a ghostly voice tells him that this is just the beginning and things will get worse. Tata is startled and wonders where the voice came from. The next day, Tata gets a call from Takaya, who tells him that Mitsuo has been rejecting all invitations to hang out. Takaya thinks Mitsuo might be seeing someone. Takaya then invites the boys to go out with him. Kuko overhears this from behind the protest room door. When Tana sees Kuko, he gives her the phone, and she and Takaya guess that Oka might be the girl Mitsuo is dating. They then decide to spy on them. The three of them go to Oka's house because Kuko thinks that if Mitsuo is busy, he might be meeting Oka that day. Being a gentleman, he would pick her up. However, Oka catches them and invites them in, saying she has nothing to do all day and hasn't seen Mitsuo all summer. Inside Oka's house, the boys notice it is completely empty, and Kuko asks her about it. Oka explains that her family had to go back to their hometown, and she is now alone. She will soon have to move as well and needs to save money, so she won't be able to go on the trip with her camera as she had hoped. Takaya suddenly remembers their beach trip plan and suggests inviting Mitsuo. Everyone agrees, and they head to Oka's favorite restaurant. On the way, they spot Mitsuo entering the restaurant with Linda, which surprises everyone. They start thinking Mitsuo and Linda might be dating. Oka, feeling down, suggests they don't interrupt and just watch from a distance. In the following days, Kuko visits Oka's house in disguise so no one recognizes her. She says she came to try on outfits for the beach trip. While trying on clothes, Oka asks if Kuko has found out anything about Linda and Mitsuo, but Kuko says she hasn't seen them again. Kuko then shares her feelings about Tata and how she felt insecure after avoiding a kiss from him. She wants Tata to understand her feelings. Oka listens and advises her to try to understand Tata's perspective and see that he just wants to respect her. Kuko randomly chooses a place, and they end up at their school. They start recording themselves having fun and presenting. Meanwhile, at Tata's house, Mitsuo is lending him a swimsuit. Mitsuo mentions he wanted to invite Linda, but she said she was going to visit her parents. He asks Tata if he knows where her parents live, but Tata says he doesn't. The following day, and Kuko and Tata are on a train heading to the beach. They talk about their plans, and Tata mentions he's wearing a boomerang. He shows her the clothes he'll wear later, and Kuko recognizes one as Mitsuo's. Kuko asks if Tata has mentioned anything about Linda. Tata says they haven't talked about her since they agreed to meet. Kuko admits she's worried about Linda because any guy would fall for her. Tata reassures Kuko that he loves only her. Feeling better, they arrive at the meeting point and realize Takaya hasn't shown up, so they start looking for him. Takaya honks the horn, and they find him waiting in the car. He's annoyed when Tata and Kuko sit in the back like it's a taxi. They start driving after picking up Oka. Tata calls Oka to say they'll be late, and she agrees to wait at a nearby cafe. When they arrive, Oka doesn't answer because her phone has no signal. Kuko steps out to find her but takes a long time, making Takaya think they're unlucky. 
Despite the delay, Kuko sits in the back with Tata. They decide not to talk about Linda. After some time, Tata talks to Oka and mentions he heard she's dealing with a tough situation. Oka responds coldly, saying it's unimportant and they shouldn't be discussing it. This upsets Mitsuo and makes everyone feel awkward. On their way to the beach, they get stuck in traffic, and it starts raining despite the forecast saying it would be sunny. Takaya jokes that one of them must be cursed. They arrive at the beach parking lot, but it's raining too hard to leave the car. Suddenly, Kuko needs to use the restroom, but they don't have an umbrella. Tata decides to use his clothes to stay dry, even though he only has the boomerang. He eventually gets out to help Kuko reach the beach restroom. Oka sees him and also grabs some clothes to join Tata, having fun. Kuko starts recording them with her camera, but Oka takes it away and pulls her out to join in the fun. Seeing this, Takaya and Mitsuo also get out and start playing around. Kuko takes the chance to go to the restroom, but she slips and falls. Tata jokingly asks if something fell out, and Kuko calls him by his first name for the first time. Afterward, they grab a bite to eat, and the rain finally stops, bringing out the sun. They head to the beach and have a blast. As night falls, they buy fireworks and set them off on the beach. After a fun day, it's time to go home. Takaya is very tired and feels like he might fall asleep, so Kuko offers to drive since she has a license. Everyone agrees, and Tata sits next to her to keep her company. At first, everything goes smoothly. Oka, Mitsuo, and Takaya sleep in the back while Tata talks to Kuko about her trip to Barcelona and promises to wait for her with a gift. After a while, Tata starts to feel sleepy but tries to stay awake for her. Unfortunately, Kuko also falls asleep while driving. At this moment, Tata's ghost cries out for help, not wanting them to get hurt. He is seen running and passing through several doors, remembering everything that has happened since he escaped from the hospital and met Linda, who only tells him to hang in there when he asks for a message for his friend. Tata suddenly wakes up and slams on the brakes just in time to avoid crashing into a guardrail and falling into a ravine. The car stops abruptly, waking everyone inside. Kuko is the most shaken. Takaya suggests they all get out of the car. As they exit, Tata notices Kuko covering her face and sees that she has a cut on her mouth. This alarms everyone. Tata decides to call the police to report the accident. When the police arrive, they check on Kuko and tell them they only need to pay for the damaged guardrail. They also need to inform their parents about the incident. On the way back home, Kuko's father is waiting for her at the drop-off point. Kuko is surprised to see him and approaches him. Instead of comforting her, he slaps her hard, causing her to cry and leaving everyone in shock. In the days that follow, Tata talks to Mitsuo on the phone. Mitsuo tells him that Kuko is feeling better, but they haven't been able to contact her. Tata gets an idea and leaves his room, bumping into Nana, who hits him with a loaf of bread. She explains that eating bread cheers her up. He apologizes, and Nana gives him a free pass to her concert. Later, everyone except Kuko meets at the cafe where she works. They discuss the situation and reveal that Kuko's father apologized to the other kids' parents and cancelled their trip to Barcelona. Tata suggests they visit Kuko at her house, as Mitsuo knows the address. However, since Kuko has to work, Tata offers to go alone, thinking she would be more comforted seeing her boyfriend. Later, Tata visits Kuko's house and meets her dad, who takes him inside and says Kuko hasn't been herself. He opens her room door, and Tata goes in. Kuko is surprised but turns away, telling him to stay back. She admits she was pretending to be grown up and now feels ashamed, not wanting to see anyone. Tata gets upset and tells her to face her problems instead of avoiding them. This makes Kuko angry, and she yells that Tata has been avoiding his past too, so he has no right to lecture her. He reminds her that she asked him to forget her past after he admitted he used to love Linda. She shouts that it was the only thing she could do after his confession. Kuko tells Tata that she plans to leave him just like she left her family, home, and even Linda, who she deeply cares about. She shares that she often dreams of them in a car, and he leaves her alone after she steps out. Tata embraces her and vows never to leave her. He advises her to stay in the car in her dreams, and he will work on accepting his past. At that moment, Tata notices Kuko's father behind them. Unaware, Kuko continues, expressing her love for Tata and her desire to be with him forever. Tata tries to signal her, but she realizes her father is there when she hears her cat's bell and sees him. Tata tries to make up a story, but Kuko's dad tells him that lying isn't good and that he was just waiting for them to finish talking so they could all go eat ramen together. Kuko gets upset and starts to throw a fit, but her dad asks Tata to help make the ramen, saying they should stick to their normal routine. Tata agrees and goes to make the ramen. When he comes back to Kuko's room, he finds that her dad has already put her to bed. Kuko's dad thanks Tata and goes to eat. Tata notices that Kuko is having a bad dream again, so he gently tells her to fight it. In her sleep, Kuko responds that she will. 
It's the day of the summer festival, and Tata arrives at the spot where his club has a reservation. He goes inside and meets most of the club members. They notice he looks sad at first, but then they start being very nice to him. The club leader shows up and tells Tata that everyone thinks he and Kuko have broken up because they tried calling her but couldn't reach her. When they ask about Kuko, Tata seems distant. He tries to explain that they haven't broken up, but no one listens. Just then, Kuko arrives wearing a yukata, as the club leader had asked her to. The others start praising her just like they did with Tata. This was all to stop them from leaving the club. Seeing this, Tata shouts that they haven't broken up, and everyone gets mad at the club leader for misleading them. Later, the current leader gets a message from Hashino, the old club leader, saying he'll visit. Everyone is excited because Hashino had promised to come only if he got a job. But when Hashino arrives and they congratulate him, he admits he still hasn't found a job and just wanted to feel better, making things awkward. Then Linda shows up and sees the silence. After things settle down, the leader complains while drinking with friends, and Linda talks to Kuko and the main guy. She's glad the accident wasn't worse and mentions she heard about it somewhere. Linda surprises everyone by asking if they've ever played with fireworks. Kuko notices that the boy is sticking to his promise not to avoid his past and keeps talking with Linda, showing she approves and knows what happened. Linda relaxes and shares that Tata has a scar on his left leg from when they played with fireworks and one hit him. Tata remembers it was because he was protecting her, but Linda says he stayed because he was clumsy while everyone else ran away. She then asks if he plans to visit his parents in the summer, and he says yes because they miss him. Kuko asks Linda to keep Tata company if she sees him at his parents' place. Linda mentions a reunion with old classmates next week and apologizes for not telling him sooner, understanding if he doesn't want to go. Tata is unsure, but Kuko answers for him, saying he will go. Later, while walking together, Kuko says sorry for causing trouble. The boy reassures her it's okay but admits it might be tough because he's changed and his friends might want the old him back. He promises not to avoid his past and will go to the reunion. Kuko tells him she feels like she's finally with the real Tata, the one she didn't fully accept before. She used to be jealous of his friends, but now she's happy knowing the real him. A few days later, Oka is settling into her new place and Kuko comes over to help unpack. Kuko jokes that she came by out of curiosity and ends up wearing an apron to assist. Oka asks if Kuko will stay the night, but Kuko insists she wouldn't, even if the world was ending. However, that night, they are both in bed, ready to sleep. Oka tells Kuko she knows she's thinking about the boy and admires her for loving so deeply. Kuko says she's always like that, but Oka points out it's not with everyone. A few days later, Mitsuo is at an ice cream shop with Takaya and Kuko, who invited them to apologize for the accident. While Kuko is in the restroom, Mitsuo asks Takaya if he knows which high school Tata went to because he's curious about Tata's friendship with Linda. Takaya says he doesn't know since Tata never talks about his past. He mentions that he initially thought Tata was lying, but on the beach day, he saw the scar on Tata's head and realized it might be true. He advises Mitsuo not to pry into things people don't want to discuss. When Kuko returns, Mitsuo ignores Takaya's advice and asks if she knew Tata had been in the hospital. Kuko quickly pretends not to know and changes the topic, telling them about the night she helped Oka. Kuko sneaks into Tata's room while he's out, feeling guilty but curious about his mail. She can't help herself and ends up lying on his bed, kissing a pillow and whispering that she loves him. She then imitates a creepy pose from the Exorcist movie by arching backward with her hands on the bed. Just then, she realizes Nana is watching her, and she's shocked. Later, in Nana's room, Nana explains she knew Tata wasn't there and checked the noise. She liked Kuko's creepy pose and wants her to perform it at her horror-themed concert. Kuko refuses and almost leaves Nana breathless when she begs her not to tell anyone. Kuko promises to help in other ways, and Nana agrees, asking her to stay in her room. When Nana leaves, a man who looks like a gangster shows up. Kuko sees him through the peephole. He starts kicking the door and yelling, so she hides in Nana's closet. The man comes in and starts searching for Kuko. Suddenly, she does the creepy exorcist pose, scaring him. She then hits him with a purse, revealing it was all a setup. Nana walks in and explains that the guy is the bassist in her band, and he will dress up as a Yakuza for their concert. Nana suggests that if Kuko wants to see some really scared people, she should do her exorcist pose on stage. In Shizuoka, Linda picks up Tata from his parents' house, and her brother appears. Tata doesn't remember him but is happy to hear the good news. In the car, Tata holds a mirror Kuko gave him and feels very nervous. Linda reassures him, saying they were classmates and he can relax. When they reach the high school, Tata is so nervous he sits on the floor. Linda tells him to close his eyes and takes his hand to guide him. Tata apologizes for pushing her away in the past, but realizes Linda isn't listening. When he opens his eyes, he sees Kaiwa Kairo, another classmate, 
holding his hand. Tata doesn't recognize him, but his old classmates gather around, give him a red t-shirt, and say they're going to play dodgeball. They begin the game, and it's clear that Linda is really good at dodgeball. She shares a story about a boy who cheated by pretending a ball hit his face to win when they were kids. Now, she wants revenge. As they play, just when it looks like Tata will win, Linda jumps and lets the ball hit her face, giving her team the advantage and they win. Later, in their old classroom, Tata's former classmates talk about his past, saying he always tried to impress the girls. Their old teacher arrives and mentions how Tata used to cry if he wasn't with his friends. Everyone agrees he was a crybaby, though Tata denies it. The girls start taking pictures with the teacher, which leads everyone, including Tata, to join in. Tata gets excited and takes pictures with the girls and even with Linda. As it gets dark, Tata talks with Linda and mentions that he realized the dodgeball game was planned so they could all have fun together. Linda nods and says everyone wanted to do something nice for him once they found out. She asks if he came to the reunion because of his evening with Kuko. Tata confirms, saying that life has its ups and downs, but he shouldn't change who he is because of them. Linda feels encouraged by his words and says she's finally hearing the real Tata, not someone weighed down by the past. Tata shares that he's accepted himself and recalls a message Linda sent him while he was in the hospital, which helped him a lot. Later, Tata tells Linda he plans to visit the bridge where they once took a photo for Kuko. When he gets there, the mood turns eerie. Suddenly, he sees a past version of himself from the accident day, with the motorcycle speeding by. Tata rushes to grab his past self at the bridge, but the past Tata pushes him away, causing him to fall and break the mirror Kuko gave him. Looking at the broken mirror, Tata feels like he's starting to remember things. Tata visits the hospital and shares everything with his doctor, who listens and gives him tranquilizers to help when he feels uneasy because he doesn't fully understand what's happening. On the train, Tata thinks about when his ghost might have taken over his body. He realizes that both his old and new selves want to be him, and maybe his old self stepped back willingly. In mid-September, Tata goes back to Tokyo with a ring from his mom for Kuko. When he reaches his room, he sees Kuko, who runs to hug him, but her friends get there first and hug him before she can. Kuko scolds them for not letting her greet him first. Then she hugs him, and he pretends not to remember her but soon says hello. They go to eat at a restaurant, and Tata notices that Oka has cut her hair. Mitsuo asks if they can film in their club for the university festival and mentions Linda. They say they'll ask their senior for permission. Oka seems worried but ignores the situation. Later, Tata and Mitsuo are shopping at a supermarket. Mitsuo tells Tata he feels like he's hiding something. Tata thinks about telling him everything but is cut off when Mitsuo says to forget it. That night, at the protest site, Tata explains to Kuko how his mirror broke. He says he'll give her something in return and remembers the ring from his mom. He starts talking about marrying her and getting her inheritance, but Kuko interrupts and gives him a gift. When he opens it, he sees a strange sculpture and thinks it's a club, but it's actually the Eiffel Tower. Kuko tells Tata she missed him a lot and wants to be with him. Tata moves closer, but something feels off to Kuko, though she says it's not important. They start kissing again until Kuko accidentally knocks over her sculpture and hits her head. Later, Tata takes care of her in bed, saying they are both clumsy. Kuko says his room feels like her own home, and Tata says he always wants to come back to her. In class, Mitsuo is introduced to their club and told he will film everything. The guys get excited, and some girls start flirting with him. Mitsuo feels sad because he still can't talk to Linda, who is angry with him, and by the end of the day, he still hasn't spoken to her. In that moment, while Tata and Kuko are trying to cheer up Mitsuo in the classroom, Linda signals Tata to talk privately. He follows her outside, leaving Kuko with Mitsuo. Linda suggests having tea, and the girls who were flirting with Mitsuo earlier join them. Once outside, Linda starts scolding Tata, but he doesn't understand, so she ends up pushing him to the ground, getting him dirty. They return to the university so Tata can change, and notice it's empty because it's nighttime. When Linda calms down, she tells him about a friend who she distanced herself from to avoid hurting him when she sensed he was interested in her. She regrets not informing him earlier, especially with Kuko and Tata appearing with Mitsuo in the club. Tata tells Linda that it's obvious she has feelings for Mitsuo too, making her play with his hands. He shows her a ring, and they share a joke. They discuss how Tata is handling things, and he advises her to talk to Mitsuo to clear up any misunderstandings. Oka suddenly interrupts, asking to speak with Tata. As Linda leaves, Oka scolds Tata, questioning why he's so close to Linda if he's with Kuko, hinting that she thinks he's cheating. She walks away without letting him explain, calling him the worst. After that, Tata and Kuko talk about what happened and how Oka reacted. Kuko suggests that Oka's feelings might be the reason, so they decide to help their friends be happy. Tata thinks it's the perfect moment to give Kuko the ring but realizes he can't find it and must have forgotten it. Just then, Mitsuo messages Tata asking for help because some girls are bothering him. 
Later, at home, Tata wonders when to give Kuko the ring since Oka won't talk to him and he has no one to ask for advice. The next day, Tata meets Nana on the train. He hesitates to ask about the ring, but Nana mentions that Kuko did an exorcism. Before she can say more, she falls asleep. At the university cafe, Takaya, Tata, and Kuko are hanging out when Mitsuo and Oka join them. Oka tells Kuko that their favorite ice cream is being sold, so they go to get some, leaving the guys behind. The guys start chatting about Linda and how she avoids Mitsuo. Mitsuo mentions that their club leader seems interested in Linda and always interrupts when he tries to approach her. They want to continue the conversation but realize they're late for class and rush to their classroom. After classes, it's late, and Tata sees Kuko waiting for him at the exit. She says she's happy to wait for him and invites him to a cafe. There, he asks her about the exorcist, and Kuko nervously changes the subject, suggesting they invite everyone to a concert. Tata thinks he should give her the ring soon. The next morning, Tata is waiting for Kuko, nervously looking at the ring and wondering how to give it to her. Some girls from the tea club see the ring and tell him it signifies not just a marriage proposal but also that his mother wants Kuko to wear it, making Tata even more anxious. The girls leave, and Kuko arrives, so Tata quickly hides the ring in his jacket pocket. They head to their club rehearsal and discover that former club members will also join in. Yan tries to talk to Linda, but the club leader interrupts and asks Linda to help the former members. By the end of the day, Tata and Kuko are worried about their friend. Tata asks Kuko if she talked to Oka, and Kuko says that every time she tries, Oka leaves. She assures him not to worry and that they will talk later. For now, he should focus on the upcoming festival. On the day of the festival, Mitsuo is excited to film the event and tells Tata he will set aside his feelings to do his best. Later, Tata and Linda notice that Kuko is calm and helping the former classmates feel less nervous. As the festival begins, everyone starts dancing. Suddenly, Tata remembers the day after graduation and gets scared because the last thing he recalls is being on a bridge. He runs away, and Linda and Kuko chase after him. Linda finds him scared and sitting in a corner. When she mentions Kuko, Tata starts to remember the dance, Kuko, and everything else. He stands up, wanting to see Kuko, but he is still nervous and scared, thinking his old memories might take over again. At night, Sam feels unsure about his thoughts and worries about losing his memories if he remembers everything. He accidentally takes too much medicine. The next day, everyone gathers at the park, and the leader says they won't get help for the upcoming school event because of a mistake. Sam says sorry, but they say it's not his fault. Sarah motivates them to work hard independently. Later, Lily visits Sam and scolds him for not recycling correctly. She finds some pills and keeps them. While walking, Sam mentions he wants to start jogging to help him sleep better. Lily notices his worries and asks what's bothering him. Sam gets upset but then explains his fears of disappearing and regrets not sharing with his friends. Lily comforts him, saying she's there for him. She encourages him to open up, knowing it's hard, but with her support, he can face anything. The next day, the couple invites their friends over for dinner at Sam's place, with Lily cooking. When Sam asks Mike to come, Mike helps him gather some leaves. They run into Emma, who is upset because she thinks Sam hurt her friend. Sam talks to her about her attitude but still invites her to dinner, saying he will explain everything. Emma says she isn't avoiding him, just feels bad about her own hair, and then leaves. In the afternoon, Oka shows up at the protest site before anyone else and tells Tata she wanted to chat with him alone. At the entrance, she bumps into Linda and they start arguing because Oka thinks Linda has something going on with Tata. Then Nana arrives, and Linda explains she's just visiting a friend. Linda notices Oka's upset and offers to talk if Oka needs it. Oka starts crying and apologizes to Tata for her behavior. Tata reassures her, saying he understands why she thought he was cheating on her friend. Oka denies it and admits she felt guilty because she hoped to be with Mitsuo if he got rejected. She talks about why she cut her hair and realizes she's in love with Mitsuo. Tata tries to comfort her, and she asks him to record her so she can laugh about it later. As he turns on his camera, he promises to tell her everything before others arrive. This reminds him of when Kuko said it's impossible to tell everything, and he regains his memory. At that moment, Tata sees Oka but doesn't recognize her or know where he is, so he panics and starts shouting for Linda. Oka rushes to Nana's room and calls for Linda to help. The girls hurry to Tata's room, and when Linda mentions Kuko, Tata suddenly remembers everything. He becomes anxious and begs them not to tell Kuko that he's okay now, but Nana tries to calm him. Despite this, Tata gets up and runs away, leaving everyone worried. As he runs, Tata thinks it would be better if he disappeared and everyone, including Kuko, forgot about him. Then he spots Mitsuo heading home and starts chasing him. Mitsuo calls Takaya and Tata tackles him, hitting him and knocking him out. Once they calm down, the three friends start talking. Tata wants to explain but can't and begins to cry. Takaya tells him they have an idea of what happened and encourages him to let it out if he can't speak about it. 
Tata admits he's scared of disappearing. And his friends reassure him that if he does, they will find him, but Kuko will find him first, which makes him laugh. When he gets home, Tata sees a message from Kuko on his phone. She says they had dinner at Nana's place and that she won't ask any questions. The next day, Oka tells him she didn't tell Kuko anything because he asked her not to, but she did mention that he ran away. Kuko's response with saying he ran away. Tata asks Oka to record him so he can remember everything in case he forgets. She starts recording, and Tata says everything he wants to tell Kuko. Then he goes to see her. When he arrives, ready to give her a ring and share what he said in the video, Kuko tells him she can't accept it and can't promise a future with him. She says goodbye and leaves. After Kuko leaves, Tata stays in the same spot, hoping she'll return. He's afraid that if he moves, he might lose her forever. As night falls, he stays there until he sees Kuko's father in a car. On the way, Tata realizes it wasn't just luck. Kuko had asked her father to pick him up. He starts to blame Kuko, thinking she's trying to separate them. But her father tells him that Tata never went to see her. He just waited for her to change her mind and come back. He calls Tata complacent and adds that Kuko wonders why people take things for granted, making Tata realize she knew all along. Tata steps out of the car and meets Nana. She jokes that they should go inside before they get roasted. But Tata refuses and pretends to run away. Nana stops him and insists on staying with him. They talk about his fear of disappearing. And Nana mentions that Linda had told her about it before. She advises him to stay strong, or Kuko will be hurt. Tata then reveals that Kuko has already broken up with him. Nana feels bad for not being there for him and tells him she cares a lot about him and that he can rely on her. She offers her hand, promises to be kind to him for the day, and suggests he talk to Kuko and try to fix things the next day. The next day, Tata goes to the university and meets Kuko. She apologizes for what happened the day before and talks to him like everything is normal. This makes Tata think they are still together. In the cafeteria, the four friends sit together, and Takaya tells Tata he's glad to see him doing better. Tata mentions he was using his medicine wrong, which is why it didn't work. When they go back to their table, Takaya jokes that only Tata gets love. Suddenly, Kuko announces that they have broken up, surprising everyone, including Tata. The boy gets upset with Kuko and scolds her for making him think everything was okay. Kuko explains she was just apologizing and still wants to be friends. She says if he doesn't want that, they can't be friends. Before heading to class, she asks if it bothers him, but Mitsuo interrupts, telling Tata to ignore her because she talks nonsense. Kuko gets mad and warns everyone to stop interfering, or she'll distance herself. She tells Tata that if seeing her in class bothers him, he should say so because she doesn't care about attendance or classmate. She throws a cup of coffee and leaves. Mitsuo and Oka follow her, leaving Takaya with a devastated Tata, who asks his friend to go to class and leave him alone. Takaya leaves. And then Oka shows up with a video she recorded the day Tata regained his memories. They see Kuko watching the same video, realizing it's why they broke up. Tata tells Oka to use the recording however she wants and asks her to film again to lift her spirits, though he starts crying too. Oka reminds him they are in the same club making things harder, but he finishes recording with a forced smile. Later, Tata goes to the club room and tells the leader and Linda he won't let Kuko leave, instead, he will quit. Kuko arrives, shouting at him for giving up on her so easily. He replies that they got tired of him and pushes her away. Kuko keeps shouting that Tata never thought about her feelings, while he accuses her of rejecting him on the bridge. She admits she did go but arrived too late and wishes she could go back to fix it. Her leader holds her back as Mitsuo enters. Tata explains everything to them and apologizes, with Linda also saying sorry for causing the mess. Mitsuo starts scolding everyone, but Kuko walks in and hands in her resignation. Tata grabs it from her, making Kuko storm out angrily. Tata chases after her while Linda breaks down in tears. Tata catches up with Kuko outside the university and gives back her resignation letter. He tells her not to quit because the club means a lot to her and she can't be around him. Kuko responds that the club is important, which is why she gave the letter to him, and she can't be around since she didn't even go to class. Tata admits he skipped class because he felt sick and says he understands why she broke up with him. He accepts it, knowing his old memories might come back and replace the new ones. Kuko says she couldn't handle that, so they agree to stay friends. Crying, Kuko asks him to promise not to forget her, and he promises. Linda runs up and says Mitsuo left, and she couldn't catch him. She loudly tells Kuko that she won't take care of Tata because she will disappear, and not to underestimate her. They all go back to the club room, where Kuko tears up her resignation, making things normal again. That night, Tata visits Mitsuo's house to talk but doesn't find him, so he leaves a note on the door. The next day, Tata finds the same note stuck on his own door, showing that Mitsuo doesn't want to talk. With just two days until the university festival, Kuko sees Tata in the cafeteria. When she tries to talk to him, she realizes he doesn't remember her and leaves crying. 
Takaya notices and, unlike Tata, recognizes Kuko. He scolds Tata for making her cry, but Tata explains he didn't see her, so he didn't greet her. Later, Takaya is with Oka and asks her to share what she knows, but she doesn't say much. She calls the boys for a meeting to talk because she feels they might drift apart if things continue like this. Kuko promises to bring Mitsuo, even if he doesn't want to talk to Tata. Night falls, and Tata says goodbye to Linda, inviting her to the meeting. She declines, telling him to focus on getting his friends back. Suddenly, Tata forgets what he was doing and where he was. Kuko arrives with Mitsuo, but Tata doesn't recognize them and gets scared. He starts shouting and runs away looking for Linda. He ends up at a building and realizes he's in Tokyo, becoming very frightened. Linda finds him and takes him to her apartment in a taxi. While in the taxi, Linda talks on the phone, saying she knew about Tata all along and will stay at Nana's place. Tata sees Kuko crying and wants to get off, but Linda stops him and he forgets what he was doing again. Back in his room, Tata calls his mom, asking her to take him to the hospital because he's remembering the past and forgetting the present. She says she'll come the next day, and he invites her to the university festival. The next morning, Tata wakes up and sees Nana next to him, getting scared and screaming. Linda rushes in. And Tata says he slept with Nana. Linda hits him and explains that since he didn't wake up, she asked Nana to check on him. But Nana found him so comfortable she lay down beside him. As they leave, Tata thanks Nana for her help. And she says they'll see each other at the festival. However, Tata feels that after the festival, he'll remember everything from the past and forget the present. So he's already given up his room at the university. Linda and Tata arrive, and Kuko greets them, already in her costume. Tata struggles to remember who he is. In the classroom, everyone is ready to go, dressed in black because they don't have costumes. Just then, Mitsuo and Oka arrive with several people, including the president of the Council of Private University, who saw the recordings and agreed to help with suits and instruments. Tata apologizes to the president, but he says Kuko explained everything and that he's found Tata again and won't let him get lost. Everyone gets excited and starts dancing at the festival. As they dance, Tata feels himself forgetting everything until he becomes who he was before, and the person he was after the accident disappears. After the dance, Tata goes to his mom, holds her hands, and tells her he's back. Kuko and Linda see this. Linda tells Kuko that Tata has his memories back. Then, we see videos Oka took from when she cut her hair to when Tata pretended to be okay after Kuko broke up with him. The friends are watching these videos. Mitsuo tells them that Tata left with his mom and Linda because he doesn't remember them anymore. He also returned the broken mirror Kuko gave him. Kuko looks at the mirror and cries, and so do the rest of the friends. Time goes by, and Tata is seen running. As he crosses the bridge where he once felt cold, his mom's ring slips out of his jacket pocket and falls into the river. He feels like he's lost many important things. He submitted a form to the university to pause his studies and thinks he won't go back. He finds many notes he wrote about his life when he had no memories, including notes about his girlfriend. He can't remember her face and decides he doesn't want to because she broke up with him. Then, near Kuko's makeup mirror, he finds his email and password in the notes. When he checks his email, he sees many unread messages and finds one he sent to Kuko the day before, saying they should meet before Christmas because he still has feelings for her. On December 24th, Linda visits Tata for Christmas Eve. While chatting over dinner, Tata confesses he's still in love with Kuko and is waiting for her response since the bridge incident. He thinks her usual behavior and silence about the university incident means she doesn't feel the same. Suddenly, there's a knock on the door and it's Kuko. Tata mistakes her for Oka, but she plays along, saying she returned a DVD. Tata thanks her, and Linda, seeing Kuko, is surprised when Tata calls her Oka. Linda wants to invite Kuko in but can't since it's not her place. Kuko says it's fine and starts to leave but asks Tata to check her back. Inside, he finds the makeup mirror he once owned but doesn't recognize it and hands it back. Kuko shows him the love words he wrote on it, sparking something in him. Before Kuko leaves, she asks Tata for directions to the bridge where they met. Tata explains but apologizes for not being able to drive her since his parents aren't home. Kuko says it's fine and leaves. Tata goes back inside and finds an old makeup mirror. He shows it to Linda, saying it's not his. When he opens it, memories flood back, and he remembers everything. He rushes out to find Kuko but trips. Linda, chasing after him, throws him sneakers she had gifted him, reminding him why she gave them. He thanks her, puts them on, and continues running. When Tata reaches the bridge, it starts getting cloudy. The bridge begins to shake, stopping him from moving forward. Suddenly, a ghostly version of Tata appears, and they realize they can talk to each other. The ghost blames Tata for not listening before and starts to disappear. Tata reassures him that everything will be okay. Linda then shows up and hugs the past Tata, telling him she would have said yes to his confession on the day of the accident. The ghost finally feels at peace and vanishes, but not before giving back his mom's ring. 
Linda then sees Tata and tells him that if he loves himself, he should also love everything about Kuko and be with her. She says she has another yes to give and runs off. The fog clears, and Tata spots Kuko. He calls her name and runs to hug her. Kuko realizes he remembers her and says she loves him, asking if he forgot their promise. Tata assures her he didn't and says he loves her too. They reunite, and he gives her his mother's ring. They head back to Tata's house together. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Takaya sent the emails to get Tata back to Tokyo. This led to a fight between Kuko and Takaya, but he convinced her that if she loves Tata, she should do everything to bring him back. This made Kuko decide to find Tata. The DVD Kuko brought shows Tata talking about why he should stay with Kuko. In the video, he asks his future self to thank Kuko and tell her he loves her in person. With that, Tata thanks Kuko for being there. Thanks for watching till this long my fellow men of culture. Don't forget to tell us about your favorite waifu from this anime and subscribe to the channel for more content.